Hey everyone, this is Roberto Blake and welcome to another Photoshop CC beauty retouching tutorial. Today we're going to be doing a retouching focus on beautiful hair and that means we're going to be eliminating as many stray hairs as we can, cleaning up the hairline and also bringing out some contrast and highlights in the hair. Today we're going to be using the photography of John Covington. You can check out his work at www.jcov.net. Uh, he's a friend of mine and a fantastic photographer, as you can plainly see from this and the other tutorials where we've actually featured his work. Now let's go ahead and jump into today's tutorial. As I said earlier, in this tutorial we're going to be focusing on cloning out hair that we don't want in the image anymore, and also bringing out the contrast and highlights in the hair we already have. This is going to be very straightforward, and I'll try and keep this tutorial fairly short. I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the original image now. As you can see, the original image is still a beautiful uh, portrait, and the photography and makeup was actually very well done. Um, the makeup and hair was stunning, and there's just a few things that we want to clean up just to make the image uh, picture perfect. Um, you can see that we did some general retouching as we usually do um, in these photos, aside from the area that we're going to focus on, but we're just going to cover the things that we've done to improve the quality of the hair and that actually does include um, the eyebrows in this case so I'm gonna click off our original and show you the edits again alright it's a subtle difference but it is in fact there and the primary difference aside from the dodge and burn layer that we use to adjust the contrast in the hair which is optional really uh, but I prefer to do this um, in darker hair, it actually, you know, you can take it or leave it, but I prefer to have a little bit more control over the lighting of the hair, so that's why I do it. Um, and, again, take it or leave it. The cloning, however, this can make a real difference um, in an image. Um, as you can see, those hairs are a little distracting, and the hairline stuff is not as bad but I just prefer not to have it in there. So I'm going to show you how we actually um, accomplish that. And we use the actual clone stamp, healing brush, and spot healing brush to do this. In order to work non-destructively, we're going to do this on a blank layer. So we're going to create a new layer above here. And you can do this on either multiple layers or a single layer, just depending on what you feel you need to do. Um, in the case of the stray hairs that are on a background, I prefer to use uh, the clone stamp tool myself. You can go ahead and you can use um, the spot heel brush if you want or if you feel that the um, hair that's on the skin requires it. I definitely say use the spot heel brush for that or the healing brush. But in the case of stray hairs on the background, we're going to just use the clone stamping tool. And we're going to set our blend mode on this to lighten and I think I'll reduce the opacity down to about 70 percent just so that I can do this gradually now preferably you'll be doing this with a Wacom tablet for the sake of time I haven't unplugged my Wacom tablet from the Mac because I'm doing other things over there so I'll just go through this um, very quickly and uh, we'll see how it goes Now, in order for this cloning to go smoothly, you'll need to make sure that you have any color layers such as curves, hue and saturation, or gradient maps deselected and um, not visible when you're doing this cloning because we'll have all layers selected for the clone stamp tool. So that's just very important to keep in mind. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a little bit of cloning here.
So you can see the difference that that's made. And then when we add some dodge and burn in there for volume, uh, for dodge and burn, you can actually look at the tutorial I've already done on this. Um, and again, you don't need that per se. I just like to use it to add some depth and contrast to an image overall. But in the case of great photography like this, you really don't necessarily need to do that. Again, cleaning up the stray hairs just makes a world of difference in taking away distracting elements from your model's image overall. And I just highly recommend doing that whenever possible because you can see the difference it makes. And then we'll just add back in our curves there. So again, this is all pretty straightforward. Well, I hope you guys learned a little bit more about using the clone tool and about eliminating stray hairs in your um, photographs for beauty retouching. Um, stay tuned for other videos in this series. I do these uh, Photoshop CC tutorial videos usually on Thursdays, uh, Fridays if I'm running a little behind. I'll also be um, releasing high-end speed art videos on beauty retouching, so stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.